For land animals, life in the Cuban mangrove forest is not easy, and even less if you can't fly, and have just brought into the world a litter of tiny, inexpert rodents. To keep its young safe, this jutia seeks the protection of the maze of corridors of a dry mango trunk. Even when she breastfeeds her litter, she remains on the alert, thanks to the lateral positioning of her nipples. In the mangrove forest, lowering your guard for even an instant can mean death. And though the crocodiles, her worst enemies, can't reach her here, the jutias have other predators, and the Cuban boa, or maja, is one of the most fearsome. While her young are feeding, the jutia remains motionless, concentrating, alert to any sign of potential danger. Guided by its olfactory tongue, the serpent locates the den and changes course. It knows that if it can surprise the litter, it will easily be able to catch one of the young. But luckily, Mother Hutia also has an excellent sense of smell, and from the entrance to the burrow, she can detect the slight movement of the passing snake. The Khutia waits, not wanting to abandon the refuge unnecessarily if the snake is simply passing by. Unfortunately for her, the boa remains fixed on its objective. With an infinitely flexible body, the intricate trunk represents no obstacle for the snake. But as soon as it enters through one of the holes, the Hutia leads her children out through the emergency exit, and the family makes good its escape. Shortly afterwards, when the boa reaches their lair, all that remains is the musky smell of the rodent's fear and nervousness. For the hutias of the mangrove forest, moving across the ground represents a constant risk. They are perfectly able to climb, run or swim, but the waters of Sabada always contain vigilant eyes. And even when you feel you are safe, Death might be right behind you, ready to pounce. Exhausted after swimming across a pool, this Hothia is resting on a trunk, celebrating the fact she has evaded all the dangers of the water. From the pool come the sounds of her worst enemies, but on land she is faster and she seems to be rather overconfident as she gets her breath back. Every time she turns her back to the water, the dragons go on the alert. And silently, stealthily, death approaches. Luckily, she still has strength for one final leap, and on the safety of solid ground, the intrepid Hutia moves off, denying the voracious Cuban crocodile a prey he was sure was his. In the interior of the island, where the mangrove forest seems most impenetrable, the rocks are pierced by deep caverns that lead to the sea. These hidden, submerged caverns, unsuspected worlds where time appears to have stood still, are the home of one of the most fascinating and unknown creatures of the Cuban mangrove forest, 
the blind fish of the Cubanictus genus. Virtually nothing is known about them. Over many thousands of years, their world of perpetual darkness has gradually robbed them of their pigments and their vision. They are now white shadows in a black world, relics of a nocturnal marine ancestor who, equipped with wings, was able to cope with the osmotic changes of increasingly fresh water and set off to explore these flooded caves. Propelled by elegant undulations of its continuous dorsal and ventral fins, these Cubanictes swim with the tranquility that comes from knowing you live in an exclusive world where there are no predators, alert for signals indicating the presence of the freshwater shrimps on which they feed. At present, there are four known species of Cuban blindfish, but in-depth studies have yet to be carried out. How were they able to adapt to the radical changes between two worlds so completely different as the dark freshwater caves and the bright marine world of the reef? Who was the pioneer from the corals that set out on the evolutionary adventure that led to these ghosts of the caverns? Like so many other questions, the answers remain hidden, concealed in the mysterious labyrinth of the impenetrable mangrove forest. <laughs> 